So as Vesa mentioned, this is a continuation from last week. This is a series that we're um, going to be doing over the, the coming weeks and months about extending Microsoft uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365. So today's session, uh, I'm going to talk about extending uh, Copilot with plugins specifically. Now, this is a series, quick recap. Last week, we talked about the different options uh, available to you for uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365. So there are two ways to extend Copilot. You have Microsoft Graph Connectors, and you have plugins um, that uh, are available to you. And just to quickly recap as well, which one to, to use when. Here we've got the differences in, in front of you. Um, a plugin is going to be used to access data in, in real time. So up-to-date uh, uh, data that's, that's yeah, structured data, maybe from APIs, from external systems um, that you want to read, but also write as well and act upon. Um, with a graph connector, it's slightly different. Uh, this is ingesting your company data into Microsoft Graph. So it's part of the semantic index. It's part of the, the knowledge of, of, uh, of Copilot. And you're bringing that data in, which is more relevant to unstructured and, and flattened data and, and also uh, data that is read only as well. But today we're focusing purely on the left hand side. We're focusing on uh, Copilot uh, pl plugins. So, first question how do I build a plugin? Well, Again, you have two options. We have a pro code um, uh, approach, and we also have a low code approach. So, in the pro code side, um, building a plugin uh, for Copilot, you're actually building a Microsoft 365 app. And inside that app is going to be a message extension. And you can use tooling like Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code uh, and Visual Studio to build. Um, these these apps with these uh, message extensions. There is the alternative approach as well. So there is a low code approach using uh, Power Platform um, and using the Microsoft Copilot uh, Studio. For today, uh, I'm going to be focusing on the left hand side. So I'm going to focus on the, the pro code story. Um, we will be covering the, the Power Platform and Microsoft Copilot Studio uh, in, in a later session. Um, and and we'll go through and, and talk about maybe the differences between the two approaches as well. So I'm going to go straight on to a demo and I'm going to show you what a message extension actually is. If you've not um, if you're not aware of what a message extension is, um, we're going to go through that and show how uh, you know, you're building for Copilot, but you're actually building for Teams and you're actually building for Outlook as well. So you can go away and, and build a message extension today and, and use it today. And then when you, uh, you know, get access to Copilot Microsoft 365 chat, then you can benefit from, from that investment that, that you have made. So I'm going to uh, go to my browser here. And I've got a SharePoint list here. Why have I got a SharePoint list here? Well, a message extension is a great way of being able to search external systems. So uh, SharePoint is an external system. Uh, this list is external to Microsoft Teams. And, and I want to build a message extension so that um, users can search this list and they can embed content into, into a message. And I can show you how that works if I go to Microsoft Teams. So I've got a, a chat open with my colleague, Aish Bash, um, and I can go and, and use the message extension to search uh, that list. So if I go to the uh, little flyout down at the bottom, we can see that I've got a Contoso uh, product app, and this is what contains my, my message extension. And if I click on this, it gives me a, a text field where I can search the, uh, the, the list and bring back some, uh, some information from that list. It's actually done that for me. So there's a bit of a first run experience there where it's just going to got all of the products and it's represented it in, in, this, uh, in this results layout where we have a, a little graphic there as a, as a preview and some you know, minor information about the, the, the title and, and the category of the uh, uh, of, of the uh, so the retail category of, of that product. Um, and I can select uh, this uh, product and, it, and I can embed this into uh, my message and I can add um, uh, buttons to this um, and I can send this to uh, to ICHA um, ICHA could then get this view the actual record in SharePoint or actually edit the record directly from within teams as well 
Now, this message extension, uh, it works in Teams, but it also shows up in Outlook as well. So I can benefit in Outlook, say I'm sending emails, not just sending Teams messages. If I create a new email here, um, I can go up to the uh, the apps drawer and I can see my, my app again, Contoso Products, that contains the message extension. They get a similar experience um, to what I had in Teams. And I'm going to get a list of, um, uh, of, of products back. And then I can embed this into my email as well. Uh, I can send this email and then the uh, the recipient can then you know, use uh, that, uh, that content in there, the actions. Uh, and I can show you that. I'll just show you one that, that I've sent before. Um, I've got view button and I've got the edit button there. So I'll just click on view and that's going to open the um, yeah, let's open the, the SharePoint list item and oops, I go back to here. And if I click edit, we get an inline form. So I can actually edit it through the email as well and click save um, uh, and then update, update that information in SharePoint as well. OK, so what's kind of happening here? Um, right, I'm going to open DevTools and we're going to see what's happening behind the scenes here. So let's open the uh, the, the message extension again. And this time I'm going to actually search. I'm going to put Mark 8 in here. You can see I've got a, a few requests that, that have been uh, sent from this message extension. So in here, and I'll just make this a little bit uh, bigger, we can see that we have um, so this is the this is the the, uh, the 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 content that's been sent to our message extension which tells us the, uh, the the sorry the the command ID which is which is search um, I can see that we've been we've passed some parameters as well so you can see here we've got the actual text there um, which is which is mark eight my message extension is getting that and going, oh, OK, I can act upon this and I can filter the actual results that come back and I can, you know, show them um, in, in the in the results and the results come back as a, as a compose extension. I'll show, show it here. So it's a compose extension uh, response from my message extension, which basically contains an array of an attachments. And these attachments show the content. So what I actually in, injected into the uh, in, into the message and also uh, preview as well. So in the preview in here, you can see that we've got some images in there. We've got the subtitle and the title, which relates to this. And in the content, we've got a huge adaptive card. So in here, I'll just expand this. We can see that we have our um, uh, we have our image here. Uh, we have our um, information like call volume, release date, and we've got the actions as well, which are displayed on there. So we're sending a request uh, off to our um, message extension saying, yeah, I want to search for Mark 8 products. The message extension is returning adaptive cards uh, for us. And that's how um, a message extension works at a, ver a very high level. Um, you put your search criteria in, the message extension returns the, this uh, attachments array that contains adaptive cards. OK, so let's just take a quick look at what that looks like in uh, Microsoft 365 chat. Just put in a prompt. So when using uh, this uh, this plugin in Microsoft uh, 365 chat, I've already enabled the plugin. I'll just open the flyout uh, and show you that. So it's already uh, enabled. Is Copilot is going to actually call our message extension um, for us. But it's going to work out. Um, what it needs to send. So in the case where um, I showed the uh, the message extension in Teams, it passed the, uh, the the mark eight value. And that was direct from from the user interface. That was direct from me actually, you know, typing in in the words. With Copilot, that's different. The same thing is happening, but Copilot is deciding based upon uh, what I've passed in as the prompt, what to send through. 
okay so it's slightly different but you can see that we've got some similarities here where we've got the uh we, we here we have our our main adaptive card with uh, our our actions in here um as well that that show in the results so it's working exactly the same way in teams and outlook um in in microsoft 365 chat Microsoft 365 chat has just taken that response of adaptive cards and gone, okay, I know that I can send, uh, sorry, I can represent that in my summary um, and have that that information as part of its response. So it's gone and got that information from, from our uh, plugin. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at the architecture of what was going on behind the scenes there. So here is a message extension. Uh, here's how everything uh, worked. So a message extension is a Microsoft th uh, 365 app. Uh, so that has uh, that is deployed into uh, Microsoft Teams uh, with using an app package. And that app package contains manifest. It basically says, you know, this, um, this, this app contains a message extension and here's the information that, that you need to represent that. And that's shown up in the different clients. So it's shown up in, in Teams, in Microsoft 365 Chat, and in Outlook. And when the user is, is interacting uh, with that client, there's actually messages going to a bot service uh, in between. So we have a bot service that's that's getting the, the, the messages um, from, uh, from, from the client, and it's then relaying that to uh, a web server where our bot code is running. And our bot code is then going off and going, okay, I've been sent a message from, uh, from this bot service. I've got this parameter uh, that had the mark eight name in there. I'm going to use that to send a request off to my uh, to get my external content um, based on that. And then I'm going to return that. I'm going to return that back to the bot service, which is then going to relay that back to uh, the client. And um, so I mentioned with Teams and Outlook, it's very direct. Um, you know, the UI is pretty much doing those those uh, direct calls, and I showed that in the in developer tools. However, Copilot is slightly different because it's a service that's actually making that call. You know, if I open the dev tools up in Microsoft 365 chat, I wouldn't see these, these requests uh, going backwards and forwards because a, the Copilot service is, is doing that for us. So there's a question here of, well, how does Copilot choose what to send and how does it know what to send um, as well? Um, so when a uh, when a user adds in you know kind of like the the prompt um like i did which was find products at contoso uh, aimed at individuals it can reason over that prompt that and, and and understand the user's intent and what that what what it does when it when it's uh, coming up those reasoning it's actually searching for relevant tools to say do i have a tool that can help me answer this this question and this is where the the message extensions uh, come in is that copilot is going off and going yes I, I found something that that can help and then it needs to know okay well it can help but what do i need to send to it and what does this message extension accept before then executing it to say hey you can do something for me here's the information that you need and then execute that return the results and then copilot will use all of those results to generate its summary because it could be getting uh, data from um like a graph connector it could be getting it getting the data from multiple plugins so it's the Copilot service is orchestrating behind the scenes and calling all these different uh, 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 plugins when relevant to, uh, to to the prompt before generating the summary and then returning that in the response. Now, there's one thing that that's missing, which which I'm going to go through now is okay. So, how does Copilot actually know what my message extension is is capable of? And this is where the, the app manifest really comes into play here. And I'm going to show you this. Here is my app manifest for, for the, uh, the example which, which I, I shown in here. So this is part of the app package. This describes the functionality of, of the app, right? And this, this basically says, um, 
that it has a message extension. So I have a compose extensions array defined here that says I have a message extension in here that can be used. But we have things like the name of the of the app. We also have app descriptions as well. So we have a short and a full uh, description. And in here, Copilot is using this information as part of its discovery. So we need to make sure that when building our um, uh, our message extensions, plugins, that we really think about what our descriptions are, are, are being uh, used by Copilot for. So things like, OK, it's a tool to look at products. Uh, it gets real time information. It can work in Microsoft 365 chat. We have a few examples in here as well, just to help Copilot in its discovery to go, OK, I think I found something that can help. Once it finds um, the the app, it's then looking in the app to go, OK, what commands have I got available to uh, to, to to then you know use? in here and we have a command here which is uh, just got the id of search but it's a it's a query uh, command which has a description of well you know this command will help you uh, find products by name or by uh, target audience so great copilot can understand then okay i can use this to find products and then we have parameters and these are kind of the 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 the, the slots of information that copilot can send through to our code um, which then we can use to you know call apis um uh, uh, return the data uh, back so we have two here which is product name and you may notice there was uh, there was only one that was shown in the user interface in teams and in outlook and and that is one thing uh, to note is that teams and outlook only support one parameter so the uh, the name was only uh, shown there and yes i could uh, uh, I could add uh, some text in there. And if I'm using it in Teams, I'm using it in Outlook, I can only search by name. Copilot supports multiple parameters. It supports up to five, actually. So with Copilot, you can be a bit more complex in the, in the questions that you're asking. Your prompt is generally more complex. It's not just searching by, by keywords. It's, it's, it's semantic based um, uh, search. So when I put the prompt in uh, that said, you know, find products at Contoso aimed at individuals, it was looking at this parameter and going, OK, I'm looking for a target audience. And this this parameter here tells me that or tells Copilot that um, that this is relevant to the audience that the product is aimed at. And we can actually say, well, you know, if someone says, uh, related to individuals, what you actually mean is consumer products and the same for businesses. Um, so Copilot can then understand this and say, OK, you've asked for individuals, but what you actually meant was consumer products. So for me as a, as a message extension uh, developer, if there's certain um, uh, values that I want added in there and, and, and add constraints in, I can use the description uh, to uh, to do that. And in a nutshell, that is a, a message extension very, very quickly um, as an overview. But we're going to dive in even more uh, in future um, sessions. Um, next week, um, my colleague Waldek, Waldek Mashtikas is going to uh, cover extending Copilot for Microsoft 365 with graph connectors. And then, like I said, part of the series, we're going to deep dive into uh, more of the samples, the sample which I've shown you um, doing another session where I'm going to get into the code and show you exactly what's happening uh, inside that, that message extension. And with that, uh, if you want to find any more information about extending Copilot, go to aka.ms slash extend Copilot M365. Uh, Vesa, back to you. Mm -hmm.